This morning headquarters, of course, has got you covered all morning long. We've got Jen Carfagno, Dr. Greg Postel here with a look at what's coming up at 9 o'clock. It's finally Friday. Yes. What are we talking about today? So every Friday, we got this thing going on. Uh, we are going to visit the Grand in State, New Hampshire, because we talk about best in state. So from the smallest coastline in the U.S. to the highest peak in the Northeast, New Hampshire has something for everyone, but only one that. thing Good. can be best in state. So tune in at 1140 Eastern to find out what we are crowning as best in state. That is awesome. And you know, we have more than that too as well. We have uh, taking a deep dive into next week's sort of severe weather threat, which actually yes. could be pretty significant. Mm -hmm. We'll take a close look at some of those ingredients that are coming together and talk about in context, the climatology. Are we supposed to see this kind of severe weather this far north? Right. Right. And it'll it's be obviously interesting as we get ready for the week after because that'll be, of course, when we expect to see totality or not. That's great. Right. Leading to the morning hours to get you ready for all the big events in your neighborhood. Weather Channel does have you covered from coast to coast, of course. Heck yeah, we do. And we're going to let you know what is set to come from the sky this weekend. You got rain, you got uh, hail, too. Kind of like what we saw last weekend in Texas and hopefully will not be the size of, say, Easter eggs. So. Yeah. That would be a huge yeah. hail. A grouper would be even worse. Oh, the worst. Yeah, absolutely. Be, thankfully, we don't have to deal with hailstones that big. Man, this stuff can be damaging. I yeah. mean, quite the time you had there. So, yeah, we're hoping that we won't have the repeat performance. And uh, Did you say grouper? I did. Sometimes, <laughs> I mean, hailstones can get really big depending on the strength oh. of the updraft. But thankfully, not as big as groupers. Yes. It's a big fish. It's a big fish for sure. Big fish. <laughs> All right. Let's get going. we got a lot to talk about today, though. Um, the rain is finally moving out of some spots. I indeed it is. And we're going to jump right into the big deal. It's melt. And we could have some flooding because of it. So I'll show you all of it. We'll start with the rainy spot in Portland, Maine, where we've got rain all day long today. Well, mo I won't say all day long, most of the day, uh, even by three o'clock. Um, we'll probably have some showers around, but then finally exiting at this point. Temperatures hanging out in the upper 30s, kind of a raw day. You don't have a lot of spring like feel to the air out here today, except for the fact that it's raining and not snowing. It's been raining for a lot of us here. It's been adding up here. A number of spots coming in with their wettest March on record so far. You look at places like New York City, LaGuardia Airport, JFK, Bridgeport, Connecticut, more than 10 inches of rain in New York City at Central Park. We saw more than nine inches. Portland, we've seen more than 10 inches of rain, and we're going to add to more of that for today. Rainfall out there in Boston as well. And you look at this radar. I mean, there, there are some wet snowflakes falling out there. Western burbs, maybe, you know, just go out towards the hills a little bit more. You'll get into, I'm not accumulating snow, but snowflakes nonetheless here on this last uh, wrap up here as we uh, wrap, wrap up the week this Friday. We've got rain and snow up into parts of Maine as well. Temperatures are on the chilly side. It's a raw situation out there. Winds are gusty, making it feel even colder. Boston right now, gusts are running about 25, close to 30 miles per hour. So with temperatures hovering about 40 degrees, it's going to make it feel like it's in the low 30s. The rainfall is a concern, not just because it's been heavy and it's been heavy all month, because it is falling on ground that is frozen and is snow covered. And that's why there's a flood watch up here in eastern Maine. So we've got snow with rain falling on top of it here. And the concern is that we'll get some flooding coming out of that rainfall through the afternoon hours. So you see this rain. This is through about lunchtime, finally leaving Boston about two or three o'clock, finally leaving Port, Portland just after that, hanging on into northeastern New England until tonight. And then finally, with this thing, moves on out. But wow, does it take even until early tomorrow morning to do that? Reynolds. Thank you, Jen. Well, the deadly into that forecast across the West. You know, we've got rain coming in. It's incoming. It's actually already happening. And I mentioned this kind of double barrel situation. It's a tiny low up there just off the Washington coast, but it's this bigger one that is the main weather maker. This is off the California coast. This is going to be spreading in as we get into the weekend. So you've had a little precip out there over the last couple of days. Got a little break uh, for now, but we're about to get into some bigger amounts of rain and snow and some wind too with the system coming on in. A couple of showers out there along the coast of western Washington, Oregon, though dry at the moment in Seattle and Portland. We've got showers today in San Francisco, in San Jose, Sacramento. Some showers will be making their way in and then spreading down the coast as we get into the holiday weekend. Rain in Los Angeles, heavy snow for the Sierra. Thought Never thought you'd be uh, skiing on Easter, though, you know, with Easter a little early this year, uh, certainly you got that chance. But yeah, there's going to be a lot of fresh powder out there for skiers and for folks who are traveling, this could be a concern. We'll be looking at anywhere from 8 to 18 inches of snow for places like Truckee in California. We've got rainfall, maybe 1 to 3 or even 3 to 5 inches of rain in Southern California. And because of the heavy rain concern, there is a flood watch already up. It starts tonight. It goes through Sunday all the way down to San Diego. Rainfall today, 
tomorrow into Sunday, and then again Sunday into Monday, driving some flash flood concerns here. This issued by the Weather Prediction Center. So heads up about this heavy rain, Reynolds, just as we get into the holiday weekend. Okay, Jen, thanks so much. Do you like to spend your Easter weekend? What are you up to? Are you on vacation? Are maybe doing some egg hunts, traveling to see some friends and family, or just staying home? Staying home has won so far. Wow. By a yeah. lot. How about that? Yeah, that sounds pretty awesome. Staying home, take it easy. Let's go see what the viewers had to say. This viewer says they're just wrapping up right now. Mm -mm -mm. Tulips a little bit longer. Yeah. Some of the flocks are starting. Yeah, the, the colors are great out there. Well, you oh, can go to Threads, tell us what you're up to, um, and vote in our poll, and we will be sharing your comments on the show. Yes, indeed. Hey, um, ended. Yeah, I could I could see myself joining in. Not that we're imposing, but any measure. <laughs> Reynolds will not show up at your Reynolds door. shows up. Yeah, he won't show up at your doorstep, I promise. No, <laughs> not at the beach. I mean, he gets in the bunny fur. You don't want that to happen. I mean, come on. Well, you can go to Threads, send us your comments, share your pics and video with us using the hashtag YesTV. Absolutely. The flamingo population is blue. Bubbles, bunny suits, and egg <laughs> costumes. I mean, what more like do you trouble. need? That's a party in its own right. Actually, here's something interesting. When I was Bring very it. little oh, look for, at that. for Greg, I guess, I don't know. It's cute. It's a cute oh, little gosh. nickname. Yeah. You know, what's interesting is I had a great friend that was a flamingo, and flamingos are from eggs. They so are. it kind of goes full circle. It really yeah. does. It's incredible how it's that flamboyant. works. flamboyant. Oh. To a new life. I love it. Just figuring that out. Yeah. Oh, this is so sweet. Yeah. Resilience. The name is so cute, Ricotta. Absolutely. All right. Yeah. He's not flipping that or anything. He's having a good time there. <laughs> My goodness, what a uh, Brazilian. It's definitely not a cheesy name either. You got no, it. <laughs> that's very true. No doubt about Thank it. Thank you for that. Right. This year, that's for sure. Yeah. Goodness gracious. <laughs> All right, we're going to commercial break. Beautiful shot, though, the falls. Really? And people used to go with those things in barrels. Isn't it great? That is such good advice. You know, when you think about it, most of the time when people get into trouble, it's because they aren't relaxed here and they start to get frantic. And so relaxing, floating, doing what you can there to stay safe. We have had six fatalities, six deaths this year, five in Puerto Rico, one in Florida. And let's hope we don't add to that list here. We're getting into a busy time, especially with spring break. A lot of the uh, college spring breaks have happened, but now we're getting into the high school spring breaks and kids going to the beach. And you know, rip current risk is out there. We've got a high risk today along the Florida Panhandle beaches. We also have a high risk across the west coast of Florida. We're also looking at a few spots down here in southeast Florida, like around Miami Beach. And that's where the water temperatures actually are warm enough that you're really going to think about swimming. The water temperatures here in the mid-70s. Elsewhere, it's a little bit cooler. I mean, low 70s there on the west coast of Florida. I think that's tolerable. But mid-60s there in the Panhandle, tough to think about swimming, right, with water temperatures all that chilly. We've got rainfall in the forecast over the the next five days, although it doesn't come for a few days. So you see that map and you think, oh, it's going to rain. Not necessarily. It doesn't come until the middle to the end of the week for you in the panhandle. Miami, we've got a dry week ahead. Today's forecast, you started off a little chilly this morning in the 60s. And for South Florida standards, that is chilly. Uh, we'll have another chilly morning tomorrow, and I'm going to put that in quotes, but warming up nicely through the afternoon and more like it Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday with overnight lows here settling about 70 degrees, highs in the 80s. Key Largo, Florida, looking good. Temps are going to be in the upper 70s. No rain in the forecast for you. Beautiful weather ahead. Orlando, we've got a dry forecast too, which is great to see. And we start heating up by Tuesday. We could hit the 90s. All right, Reynolds, everyone is also gearing up for perhaps traveling to see the eclipse roll that time, the time of year that, you know, you do get storms that could go severe. Now, overall, look at the forecast for today. It's really not thunderstorms that we're talking about. It's rain. Yeah, that, that's going to be the case. In places like Boston, the rough stuff is early, so kind of front-loaded in your forecast. It will improve later on. Atlanta, uh, other than the pollen, I don't think you can top this. It's beautiful. Yeah. Really it nice. Be, it could be smidge warmer. Houston and Miami, I think, are topping it. Yeah. There you go, a smidge warmer. We got 73 degrees, and we see uh, possibly some of the more mild air being conducive to the potential of some storms firing up later on. Yeah, so let's look at this. You know, it's possible here into parts of Iowa, Illinois. Um, we've got that chance of this evening of some spotty showers. You're watching a place like Chicago. It's really not until tonight, though. So your day today is dry, Chicago, but look at this. Absolutely. Your thunderstorms are a possibility overnight into tomorrow. Yeah, no doubt about it. By early in the morning, we see this, the, the actually the tower cams in Chicago could be pretty interesting. Looking east mm -hmm. as we have a lot of the showers moving You might across. be watching this on the show tomorrow. We'll be there, yeah. definitely. <laughs> Tomorrow, we've got more of that moving across the Ohio Valley and breezy for you in Boston. Yes, yeah, so and then we'll keep an eye on that, continuing to move east into with the rest of Illinois, into Indiana, Ohio, and even Pennsylvania tomorrow. Then looking ahead to Sunday, wow, the southwest, we could have thunderstorms in Los Angeles.
Could happen just the opposite in Seattle. Mix of sun and clouds. Beautiful conditions from Mount Rainier all the way to Mount St. Helens. Medford was 62 and partly cloudy. Yeah, so we've got this system coming into the west. You know, it comes in Saturday with the rain in the Bay Area, and then on Sunday down to Southern California. Meanwhile, that whole system kind of drives what's happening in the east as well. With the trough in the west, we get this warm front that's lifting up and chance of thunderstorms out there. Absolutely. Sandwiched between parts of the Great Lakes, the Ohio River, and every spot in between. That's where you're going to see it. But also from Cincinnati, Thunder Boomers was 67. Uh, let's see, Detroit, mainly south of you, you find the moisture and still some snow out towards the west. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. So there is a trough in the west, some cooler temperatures out there. And when that happens, we've got generally a ridge across the east, especially the southeast. Look at temperatures warming up to the 80s on Easter Sunday all across the south. Absolutely. Could be booming in terms of some, well, we've got spring storms. So we're going to deal with them for that. Let's go to Dr. Fun. Cantori was, well, we are in Carbondale, and Jim was supposed to witness the most the most time in totality during the total solar eclipse, but then you had this cloud that moved overhead the stadium where we happened to be in Carbondale, and it happened right as we had the big moment. Terrible timing for that Unbelievable. cloud. Unbelievable. Now, for this year's total solar eclipse on April the 8th, he's hoping his luck will change. Every Friday, we're, we're doing a best in state, but very excited about the solar eclipse as well, so we want to get you into that forecast here, go city by city. We're getting closer to it. I mean, but look, you still know that there is time for this forecast to change. Without a doubt. Yeah. But as it stands right now, again, everything's subject to change. Here's your forecast for Niagara Falls, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. She got a chance. Yeah. Sun and clouds. Could definitely happen. Yeah. Temperature 60, you. really not bad in the afternoon, step, stepping outside. All right, Niagara Falls. Um, the time of maximum eclipse is at 3.20. Totality begins at 3.18 and then ends at 3.21. You've got three minutes and 34 seconds. Now, let's just say that you do have a thin veneer of clouds or even a cumulus here or there, that sort of thing like we did in Carbondale. You will still have some effects. It will still be a grand experience, no doubt about it. You'll so. still probably get the 360 sunset. I exactly. mean, there's, there's so many different pieces of it. See, the animals behave differently. We had a bird that dive-bombed my shot in Nashville during the last total. I mean, literally, the, the animals are confused. Yeah, a lot of confusion. Yeah. And that can happen anytime with the confused animals. Yeah. But there you go for Burlington. Again, uh, looks like a possibility quads on your Monday, too, at 59 degrees. All right. Well, don't forget our question of the day. We are asked trip to the White Mountains, the best thing to do in New Hampshire. Um, here on AMHQ, visitors have their pick of several different railroads. So what makes them unique and what can we expect to see after hopping on board there? And uh, my gosh, those shots are just expected, just incredible. They really are breathtaking. What is the best time of year to visit the White Mountains? And, and how do the seasons play a role in other activities that people can do throughout the year? Um, and not that you needed to add anything more, but you have that because we're less than two weeks away from the total solar eclipse in northern New Hampshire is in the yeah. path of totality. So what's going on for that? That is incredible. Cheryl Reardon, thank you so much. Cheryl Reardon, president of the, the White Mountains Attraction Association. We really appreciate your time with us. Uh, some of the best fly fishing I've ever done in my life in the presidential range. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, place. Yeah, um, that was cool. I really love this. Every week, we every Friday, we go yeah. to every state by state, trying to go in order is when they became a state, and we're going to highlight the top spot in all 50 states here. You all have been chiming in. We use the hashtag best in state, so you guys can share your favorite thing about your state or the state that you visited. Mm -hmm. So next up, we're going to be in Virginia. Virginia, and then New York, and then Rhode Island. So many incredible places in America. And By the way, I asked Cantori, because you know mm -hmm. he's from up here, oh, yeah. what he thought New Hampshire best in state should be. And he's like, yeah, Mount Washington, definitely. <laughs> and I didn't tell him, so I hope he's watching. And there you go, it was, yes, indeed. The, hope so, the mountain, hope so. The White well, Mountains. Exactly, beautiful place. Hey, weather hitting the road. A new month and a whole host of new threats with severe seasons starting to ramp up. So let's talk about that in today's Coffee Talk. Severe weather comes in batches, mm -hmm. you know, and when you look at the calendars, mm -hmm. this shows us the days this past March where we've seen a lot of reports of severe weather, tornadoes in particular, um, it happened kind of like in one confined few days in now, the middle of March. I mean, to your point, I mean, you punch the accelerator, a couple of handful of spots like the 6th, you've got one on the 10th, you have zero, and then the 14th, it just explodes in activity. Mm -hmm. but, but we really didn't have a lot of activity in March, if you ask mm -hmm. me. When you think about mm -hmm. March can be a busy, severe month. We did have that one big, I'll, I'll call it an outbreak. Mm -hmm. But other than that, most days were well below average. Right. It seems like we did not have or have not yet have the textbook severe weather event that, well, you can sometimes get in March. And this is testimony to that, Jen. This is a really good point. What we shaded here in the background was the average frequency of tornadoes mm -hmm. during the middle March period. The red dots 
are where this March we actually saw the tornadoes, and there's a bit of a mismatch. Not exactly into the, I guess you could say, weather bullseye, so to speak, yeah. climatologically speaking. Okay. Right, and you know, we had a very warm winter. Um, March was a weird month, I feel like, and we had all this active weather outside of the area you would typically expect to. Our tornado reports are running below average. And that's what this graph shows. The white line is the average tornado uh, numbers that you get as you go from January through February to March. It increases. The red line is what we've seen this March. Mm -hmm. And notice that in both cases, the white line, the red line, the white line being climo, the red line being what we've seen, it kind of moves and fits and starts, right? We get these periods where there's inactivity, where the lines are flat, and then all of a sudden we get an uptick with a big jump in a severe weather event of some kind. Maybe a lesson we can learn too is if you look at early January, notice that we have that spike. Sometimes we see this, oh my gosh, this is going to be the crazy season of all time. When really just the opposite happens, we kind of slow down a little bit. Yeah. So the early mm -hmm. signs don't always mean long term it's going to be that way. Right? And, you know, we know as we go into April, on average, it's a busier month. And you take a look at where it expands the areas that you would typically see severe weather. It starts to include areas uh, in the southern plains, as we know, but also then inches farther to the north. So the question is, uh, what is this going to look like for our early April going forward? And, you know, we do have some severe weather we think upcoming. We'll talk about that in a second. But as you mentioned, April is that month where the real yeah. upswing in tornado frequency occurs. And with May traditionally one of the busiest in past Absolutely. years, it feels like April has actually turned out to be the yeah. busiest, you know. So here's a look at Monday's forecast. This is the actual forecast, not a climatology map. Um, we've got the risk of severe weather right out of the gate here as we start April. Absolutely. Monday, April 1st could be an active one with all modes of severe weather, including some tornadoes. A uh, lot of spring break for kids, too, so just be careful. Have those planes in place. Wow. The, the great Easter candy, you're and watching the baseball, <laughs> and the pollen, too. Plenty of it, there, no doubt. It's a good combination. Get like that. All right, yeah. well, you can go to Thread, send us your comments, or to get you ready for all the big events in your neighborhood. The Weather Channel has you covered from coast to coast. That's right, and what is set to come down from the sky this weekend, you've got, well, hail and heavy rainfall. Kind of what we saw here in these images behind us in Texas. I mean, it was rough. Uh, we're hoping, though, this time it won't be the size of, say, Easter egg hail. Yeah. Heavy stuff. They can do some damage. If it gets colored. Yep. <laughs> then I'll be, then I'll be uh, worried. There you go. You know, terrible. Uh, really, yeah. Watch out for you know, the severe weather. Seriously, we, with hail is in the forecast for the coming days. We do. Yes. Yeah. So we're going to get to all of that, including some other issues actually that might be uh, getting in your way this weekend. Absolutely, could be a big deal. Now let's jump right into.